wave that gives that natural look is T O N I, Tony. Tony. Tony Home Permanent, the wave that gives that natural look, brings you Crime Photographer. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. This is Bill Cullen greeting you for Tony Home Permanent and inviting you to listen to another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Cupid is a Killer. Early evening in the Blue Note Cafe. Casey and Ann Williams are perched on two tall stools when... Ethelbert! Your phone's ringing. Answer it. It might be important. I'm coming. Just bringing up some lemon. Well, hurry up. Come I'm on. I'm coming. I'm coming. Hello? Blue Note Cafe Ethelbert speaking. Yeah, he's here. What? It's for you, Casey, your city Uh-oh. desk. Give me a... Hello, Burke. Yeah. Yeah, Miss Williams is here with me, right now. Okay, Bert. Right, we'll be right over. Yes, so long. Now what, Casey? An assignment for you? A murder, maybe? So right you are, Ethelbert. Come on, Annie. Yeah, but who, uh, where... We'll give you the details when we get back. So long, pal. Have you been wondering how you can afford a new permanent just when you want some new clothes for summer? Well, Tony Home Permanent is your answer. A Tony costs only one dollar, and yet there's no lovelier, longer, lasting wave at any price. For Tony gives you this twin guarantee. Your Tony wave is guaranteed to last just as long as the most expensive wave you've ever had. And your Tony is guaranteed to look more natural or your money back. So get a Tony Home Permanent for only one dollar. With plastic curlers, $2. And save money for new summer clothes by giving yourself the loveliest wave you've ever had with Tony Home Permanent. The wave that gives that natural look. T-O-N-I, Tony. man was shot by someone who was outside, Logan. The bullet came through that window. That's right, Casey. The killer was across the street in a parked automobile. He used a high-powered rifle. Rifle? Yeah. We found the slug that went through this guy's skull, uh, 30-30. Hmm. I remember two other killings that fit this pattern, Logan. Guys shot in the head from a car with a 30-30 rifle? Yep, I'm thinking of the same two previous killings, Casey. You figure Bat McCoy did the shooting? Sure. Bat McCoy? This is his very successful method of knocking off guys who get in his way, Miss Williams. Of course, I'll have him picked up for questioning, but he'll have a 22 carat alibi ready as usual, and we won't even be able to hold him. Do you identify the dead guy, Logan? Yeah, he's a young fella, Benny Thrush. He played piano over at Bat McCoy's Purple Slipper Cafe. Why would a big shot like Bat McCoy want to bump off a piano player? I'll tell you. You two know a gal named Valerie Hooper. She used to be a cashier at Schmidt's restaurant. Yeah, we know her. Yeah, we often eat at Schmidt's. Pretty kid, isn't she? Yeah, redhead. Nice, too. What happened to her? We haven't seen her Two months ago, she got married to Benny Thrush. What, this guy? Who's just been killed? Uh According to what I've heard from my private sources, McCoy fell for Valerie hard. She's not the two-timing sort, so McCoy didn't get anywhere. Now, it's my idea, Casey, that he killed Mr. Benny Thrush in order to have a clear field with Mrs. Benny Thrush. That McCoy would do a thing like that. And I'll give you a ten to one, Casey, that McCoy will throw a top-grade funeral for his ex-piano player and will officiate as chief mourner, all to make a hit with Mrs. Benny. Oh, nuts, and we cops can't do a single thing. Not a pretty picture, Logan. But, um, fancy gangster funerals make good newspaper copy, Casey. All right. Annie, you and I are going to attend that funeral. <laughs> Quite a crowd outside The Undertaker's. Yeah, funerals of murder victims always pull an overflow audience. Let's go. We'll see the murderer inside, Casey. He'll be comforting the widow. Yeah. Coy had a perfect alibi, just as Logan figured. Cops couldn't do a thing with him. Do you suppose that Valerie, Mrs. Thrush, knows that McCoy... No, I doubt it. Of course, the cops haven't tipped her. Hand by 
Letting her know what they suspect, you mm. know. Hey, look at that. Hmm? Logan's planted some of his undercover guys here. Detectives? Yeah, that big fellow in the gray suit. He's one. I've never seen him before. Well, he's new on the homicide squad. He's a nice guy, too. Also young and uh, very good looking. Name's Throckmorton. Throckmorton? Yeah. Clarence oh, no, Throckmorton. can't be a <laughs> cop named Clarence Throckmorton. Well, that's how the other cops feel about it. They call him Kansas. That's where he comes from. Wait, I'll introduce you. Hey, Kansas. Huh? Oh, hello, Gacy. Glad to see you. And let me present Detective Throckmorton. Kansas, this is Miss Williams. She reports at Express. Pleased to know you, Miss Williams. And to know you. Logan's detailed you here to watch Bat McCoy, I suppose. Yeah, the captain figures we just might hear or see something that will help us to get that skunk. I doubt if you will. Yes, yeah, so do I. You know, the widow that murdered fellow is one of the prettiest little women I ever seen. She looks so nice. Casey and I think she's very nice, Mrs. Rockmorton. Hey, you talk like you know her. Yeah, we knew her before she got married. You did? Yeah. She inside now? No, we're going to show up here in a minute or two. Funeral procession's due to start pretty soon. Yeah, I want to take some pictures before it starts. Annie, let's get inside. Okay. See you later, Kansas. Yeah, sure. I'll be around. Casey, me. Chapel's crowded. It's crowded with rats. Most of the mourners are gorillas who work for McCoy. Hey, you with that camera. You talking to me? Yeah. Get out. We ain't having no pictures taken. I'm from the Morning Express. I don't care where you're from. What's I said you. What's going on there? Hello, Bat. Oh, Casey. Bat, will you tell this muscle man of yours that I'd like a couple of shots of the coffin and flowers? Yeah, it's okay, Pete. All right. Everybody clear away from the coffin. This fellow's going to take a picture that'll be in the papers. Yeah, thanks, Bat. What do you say to this send-off I'm giving poor little Benny Thrush? Huh? That bronze coffin alone set me back five grand. Yeah, looks like it cost that much. You get a load of that full-size piano all made out of expensive flowers. Yeah. It's my going-away present to poor little Benny. Who do you suppose made poor little Benny go way back? I wish I knew, Casey. Say, get that flower piano in your picture. Benny's widowed like it. Yeah, I'll get it in. That does it. Say, isn't that Benny's widow coming in? Yeah, I gotta go to the poor kid. She needs me to lean on. Yeah. Come on, Annie. Let's you and me get to the widow, too. She was terribly broken up, Casey. How are you feeling today, Valerie? I'm all right, Mr. McCoy. Hello, Valerie. Hmm? Remember us? Oh, Miss Williams and Casey. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad to see you, too. Hey, what, kid? We want to extend our sincerest sympathy. If we can do anything for you, you just let us know. Oh, thank you both. If Mrs. Thrush needs anything, she'll call on me. When did you people get to know each other? Quite a while ago, Bat. Valerie, the paper's running a spread on your husband's funeral. Do you mind if I shoot a picture of you? All right, Casey. Take your picture. Thank you. So just stand as you are. That's, that's right. Hold it. Got it. Thank you. Hey, boss. Yeah? Uh, the undertaker just told me to preach us here. You want to say a few words before the church guy begins? Right? Of course I'm going to say some words about my pal, Ben. I ain't going to let this little lady's husband be stuck into the ground without I tell the world how much I thought of him. Come with me, pal. Boy, I need a rats and rats, but that McCoy is the worst. I'm thinking the same thing you are, Casey. Oh, isn't there some way to make that louse pay for what he's done and wants to do? Mind if I stand here with you? Huh? Oh, glad to have you, Kansas Church. That McCoy's about to deliver a eulogy, Mr. Throckmorton. Oh, yeah, he came inside here to listen. Ain't she the prettiest little woman? Who? Well, the widow, Mrs. Benny Thrush. Oh, yeah. Pipe down, everybody. Bat McCoy's gonna say a few words. This we gotta hear. Yeah, tell that guy at the organ we had enough out of him. <clears throat> Folks, with tears in my eyes, I stand before you to speak a last goodbye... To my pal. Yes, sir. Prettiest little woman I ever seen. Benny Thrush was like a brother. To his widow and to all of you, I ain't ashamed to say, I love this guy. Who lays here now, so stiff and cold. She's a nice woman, too. Friends, my pal Benny was a sweet character. Folks who don't know me say I'm hard-boiled and tough. But you see a guy before you... Fat McCoy talked over that coffin for almost an hour about how much he thought of the late Benny Thrush, huh, Casey? That's right, Ethel. <laughs> and was it hard to take? Mm, I can sure imagine, Miss Williams. It's a dirty shame the cops can't do anything. Three killings. 
I guess to make a case, the cops would have to find the gun practically right in his murdering hands, wouldn't he? Yeah. Man, ain't much chance of him doing that. But one chance in a million, I guess. Elbert, tell the waiter to bring me some coffee, will you? Okay. Miss Williams? Uh, yeah, please. Will you have that coffee on me? What? Kansas, Mr. Hi. Throckmorton. Hello, Miss Williams. Uh, Casey, the folks at your office told me I'd probably find you here at this Blue Note Cafe. You were so looking I... for me, Kansas? Uh, yeah. Say, Ethelbert, shake hands with Detective Throckmorton. Detective Throckmorton? <laughs> this is the first time I ever met a cop by the name of Throckmorton. It's kind of funny. <laughs> well, this is the first time I ever met a bartender by the name of Ethelbert. <laughs> hey, what's funny about that? <sighs> Yeah, say, Casey, that was a mighty fine picture you took at the funeral yesterday. I saw it this morning in the paper. Yeah, that shot of the coffin on McCoy's floral piano did turn out pretty good at that. Co- oh, that picture, yeah. Which picture are you talking about? Oh, well, I, uh... Miss Williams, I know this ain't very polite, but do you mind if I take Casey out the side door there for a minute? It's a out of private police business. No, go ahead. I don't mind at all. Oh, thank you, ma'am. If you don't mind, Casey... No, I'm right with you, Kansas. What'll hear us out here now? What's it all about? Why, oh, uh, hey, Casey, I'm going to ask you a big favor. Yeah? That that fine picture of Benny Thrush's widow that is in the paper. Oh, that was the picture that you. Yeah, were. that was. Well, now, will you make me a print of it, Casey? Like uh, that goes into frame. Well, sure, I will. Yeah, but why do you cops want it? Well, it, uh, us cops don't want it. Only me. Oh, you? Yeah, this is the personal, Casey. Oh, guess I'm a little slow. You like the widow's looks, huh? I ain't gonna lie to you. She's the prettiest little woman I ever did see. Yeah, wait a minute. Uh, have you gotten acquainted with her yet? No, no. But I, I was just thinking, uh, if it ain't asking you too much, will you introduce me someday all formal and proper like... Yeah, look, Kansas. Hasn't anybody told you that Bat McCoy suspected of bumping off Valerie's husband so he could make a wedding march play for the widow? Well, all of us cops suspect that. And you want to try to cut in on that killer? Casey, when I get a fear to skunks, I'll resign from the police department. Well... That's the way you feel. I'll get you acquainted with Mrs. Thrush tomorrow. Uh, Casey, I won't ever be able to pay you for this big favor. You've already paid me, Kansas. Yes, you give me an idea. Well, look, our coffee's getting cold, Kansas. Guess we'd better get back inside. Yeah. Well, oh, say, hey. <laughs> it's Bill Cullen talking to Miss Williams. Hey, come on over. I'll introduce you. All right. Well, back again? Ah, hello, Bill. Bill, I want you to meet the new detective on the police force, Clarence Throckmorton. Uh, Clarence Throckmorton? <laughs> Don't say it. Just call me Kansas, Bill. <laughs> Fair enough, Kansas. You can call Bill Curley. Oh, now, Ann, what have I done to deserve that nickname? You see, Kansas, we always tease Bill about having an eye for uh, curly-headed women. Oh, me too, Mr. Cullen. Nothing I admire like real naturally curly hair. Except maybe real natural curly blonde hair. You better watch out, Ethelbert. You can be fooled, you know. Today you just can't tell which is the girl with the natural curl and which is the girl with the Tony. Many a girl with a Tony has been asked if she had naturally curly hair. That's because gentle Tony waves actually look and feel like naturally curly hair. Those lovely deep waves comb into place so easily the soft ringlet ends curl around your finger. There's no harshness, no frizzy stage to live through when you have a Tony. Because even on the very first day, a Tony wave looks soft and lustrous and natural. You can give yourself a Tony tomorrow, and tomorrow night have hair so lovely, people will think you were born with a natural wave. Just remember, only Tony gives you this twin guarantee. Your Tony wave is guaranteed to last just as long as the most expensive wave you've ever had. And your Tony is guaranteed to look more natural or your money back. So it's no wonder more than two million women each month choose Tony Home Permanent. More than two million? Mm-hmm. That's a lot of women. Yes, each month another two million women have lovely, long-lasting Tony ways. How about you? <laughs> Casey, I don't like your idea at all. Yeah, but it's beginning to work, Logan. And sooner than I expected, too. It's just a couple of months since I introduced Kansas to Valerie Thrush, but the guy is so honestly crazy about her that I think she's already gotten that way about him. 
And what's more important, Bat McCoy has found out about it. Boy, is he burning. I know McCoy's sore. The men I have tailing him report that he followed Kansas home last night and took a very thoughtful gander at the windows of the house. Well, that's swell. He's getting ready to pull something. Yeah. If he follows his standard grudge murder pattern, he's getting ready to pull that 3030 out of his hiding place. Which is exactly what we want. We want to find that rifle in McCoy's hands, Casey, and we want to find him attempting another murder with it, but we don't want him to commit that murder. Look, I've got that all figured out, Logan, and I've got the answers. Yeah. Now, look. We're almost certain now that McCoy is planning to rub out Kansas. And it's a thousand to one that he'll make the try in his usual way. His usual successful yes, way. Yes, but this time, we pick the time and the place. Well, if we can do it. We can. The time will be tomorrow night and the place, Mrs. Thrush's apartment. Mrs. Thrush's apartment? She lives on the first floor with nice big windows facing the street, Logan. Now, McCoy, watching from a parked car across the street, is going to see something in that apartment. It'll make him use that 30-30. You're going to arrange for the killer to be there and see things. Uh-huh. And you'll be hiding close enough to nab him with the goods. Mind giving me the complete details? I'll be very glad to, pal. And even a dumb cop like yourself will see what a sense this is going to be. Uh, tell the dumb cop more. Okay, now listen. Kansas knows he's in danger from Bat. But he doesn't know that we've deliberately planned to set him up as a decoy. Uh, excuse me, you've deliberately All planned. All right, okay, I've deliberately planned. We'll come clean with Kansas tomorrow morning and give him the whole set You mean you'll come clean with All him? All right, I'll come clean. Now look, Valerie so far doesn't know a thing. She doesn't even suspect that McCoy gave her husband the works. But we need plenty of cooperation from her now, Logan. So we, I, I mean I, I am going to her apartment this evening, give her the complete picture and tell her what she has to do to help us. Before you continue, you're sure she will help us? Well, of course she will. Sure. She'll even thank me for the chance to do it. Well, Valerie, that's the whole story, full and complete. It, it's been a pretty horrible story, Mr. Casey. I simply can't believe that you and the police have suspected all along that... That Bat McCoy killed my husband because, because of me. Yeah, kid. And now I've told you how that you can help us to make him pay for what he did. You've told me a lot of things, but, but some of them you tried to cover up. Huh? Kansas. Mr. Clarence Throckmorton. You brought him here. He was nice to me. He, he made me like him, trust him. Not because he liked me, but... But because you and he wanted the glory of solving a crime. Glory? Hey, Valerie, no, I that... don't want to hear another word from you. All right, Mr. Casey. Yeah. I'll help the law catch the killer of my husband. When Bat McCoy phones me this evening, as he always does, I'll make a date with him for tomorrow night. Then, later, I'll break it and let him know that Mr. Throckmorton will be here in his place. I'll do everything you've asked me to. But I never want to see you again, Mr. Casey. Me? Well, Valerie, listen. Get out of this house. But, Valerie, Get I... out and tell Mr. Clarence Throckmorton that I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. So, Mrs. Benny Thrush didn't thank you for the chance to help us, Casey. Uh, she practically threw me out of her apartment, Logan. Yeah, but she did promise to do what I asked her, though. Her help won't do any good unless you get full cooperation from Kansas. And he isn't going to feel too friendly when he hears how you've wrecked his romance. Well, let me worry about that. Okay. Logan. Maybe you better worry a little about selling him on the job he's got to do tomorrow night. That won't be any trouble at we'll all. We'll see in just an hour from now when he reports here at my office. <laughs> No, Captain Logan, I won't have no part of this scheme of Casey's. Valerie might get hurt. Look, she'll be 100% safe, Kansas. That's what you say. You sure, Kansas, this scheme is foolproof. It don't sound that way oh, to me. Logan, will you convince this chump? Me, Casey? Now, look here, it's time to stop kidding and needling each other. We're out to get a three-time killer, aren't we? Yes, we are. And I think your scheme is sound. Detective Throckmorton. Yes, Captain? Now, this is an order. You'll do exactly as Casey has requested. I won't do it, sir. You won't? No, sir. You know what that means? Yes, sir. Here's my gun. Here's my shield. Well, uh, now, look here, man. When you joined the force, you assumed a duty. You can't just... I never it. assumed no duty of putting a woman in bad danger, and I am quick. I'm no longer a cop. You're going to Valerie's apartment to persuade her right yeah, now? Yeah, right now. Oh, I've seen enough of women to know that you might persuade her, and I'm not giving you the chance. Casey! I feel like a skunk for hitting him, Logan. 
It's the only way to save our plan. You oh, chump! This K.O. you handed him won't last more than a minute or two. It's long enough to put him in charge of your police surgeon. Police? Yes, yeah, sure. Under medical observation for the next several hours. Hey, see, what do you... Look, have the c- c- doc strap into a bed, will you, in your emergency hospital here at headquarters. And keep him there until after we do our stuff tonight. I can't pull a phony like that. If you don't, we lose our chance to get McCoy, Logan. Everything's set. Can't let Kansas spoil it. Kansas is the guy McCoy wants to kill. Kansas and I are the same size. We've got the same color hair. If I put on his clothes and McCoy sees only my back... You? Sure, sure. From across the street, he'll be certain that I'm Kansas. Uh, Okay, Casey. I'll get the doc and give him his orders. But is Kansas going to be sore at you? Yeah, he'll be sore at me. Valerie is sore at me. Uh, uh Uh-oh. Just thought of more trouble. Uh. The gimmick of our scheme is that McCoy's going to see Kansas and Valerie pull a hot Hollywood kiss. You don't think she'll do it with you? No, but what I'm worried about is that Ann Williams will be with you tonight, Logan. So what? Well, she's on an out-of-town assignment right now. I can't get hold of her to explain my substituting for Kansas. And if, if things aren't explained before she finds out that I'm the guy that she'll be seeing making woo-woo with Valerie, well, uh, he's going to get the wrong idea. Hey. It is possible. Well, it's a certainty. Think no more about it, Casey. When she meets me tonight, I'll explain everything. Logan, can I depend on that? Of course. I don't always trust you in personal matters. Well, now, if that isn't a fine thing to say to a pal. Are you sure Bat McCoy is in that sedan, Captain Logan? Positive, Miss Williams. McCoy's in the back seat. Watching those windows across the street as we are. You and Bat are watching those windows. I'm keeping my eyes mostly on that sedan, watching for the end of a rifle barrel to make its appearance. Well, you'll have to move awfully fast if and when it does. If McCoy has a chance to fire at Kansas' head... and I are prepared to move fast, Miss Williams. Well, of course, McCoy can't do anything until Kansas shows himself behind one of those windows again. What's that, you why, it's just, uh, uh one minute uh, to nine. He'll show himself in one minute, then. This was Casey's scheme. He must know the time you and Kansas set. Sure, Casey knows. Well, then why isn't he here? Well, as I've told you, he said he'd join us in time to get pictures. Well, where do you suppose he is? Uh, no idea. Yeah. Only 30 seconds, now. Yeah. Watch that window on the right, Miss Williams. Yeah, yeah I am. Kansas and Valerie have been out of sight all this time. You think they've been uh, mixing romance with the business, Captain? Could be. You know how it is when a guy and a gal get together. And Valerie's a beautiful gal. Any man could fall for a gal like Valerie. Those redheads are dynamite. So I've heard. Captain, I see Valerie behind that window now. And Kansas with his back toward us. Watch that car, man. Right, Jack. Oh. What they're doing behind that window... Is that five-star embrace part of the script, Captain? Yeah, that guy is really putting personality into it. Well, I'll say. And apparently, he's done a lot of rehearsing. Sure looks that way, Miss Williams. They're breaking it up now. This ought to be it, man. McCoy wouldn't hurt the girl, but now he can line his sights on the guy alone. It is it. He fired that right. Get him in. Why did you wait so long? Why'd you give him the chance to shoot? He's killed Kansas. We got the rat, Captain. The hot gun's still in his mitt. The driver of his car, too. You dirty cops, you framed me. You framed yourself, McCoy, and right into the hot seat. Why did you let him shoot, Captain? Why'd you let him kill he Kansas? He hasn't killed anyone tonight, Miss Williams. But I saw all him. All you saw and all McCoy saw was the reflection of a man and woman in a specially placed mirror. Mirror? Yes. <laughs> When Valerie and her uh, boyfriend seemed to be directly behind that window, they were really in another part of the room where a bullet from out here couldn't possibly hit them. Oh. Hey, Logan, you're standing in front of McCoy. Move away. I want his picture. Oh, Casey. Yeah, hello, Annie. Yeah, there's one shot, and I'll take another one. Well, Casey, that gray suit you have on. Uh, yeah, Kansas' clothes fit me okay, don't they, Annie? Kansas's clothes? Yeah, hold it for another picture, will you, boys? That does it. You were the man we've been watching in that apartment. Okay, sure. Oh, you... Double crosser. Uh, Logan. Didn't you explain? Oh, oh, I'm such a dumb cop, Casey. I forgot. You, you double crosser. Good night. Annie, Annie, where are you going? I've a story to phone to the paper, Mr. Casey. Never wait for me, will you? I'm not going your way. Ever again. Annie, you gotta listen. Good night, pal. I'll fix you for this, Logan. Just you wait. Annie! <laughs> Soft water shampooing, use Tony cream. 
shampoo. Even in the hardest water, Tony Cream Shampoo. Yes, even in the hardest water, Tony Cream Shampoo gives soft water shampooing that rinses away dandruff instantly. Leaves hair so soft, so smooth, so shining clean. Today, bring out the sparkling beauty of your hair with Tony Cream Shampoo. Get the handy tube or jar. Tony Cream Shampoo. It's for you. Miss Williams ain't even speaking to you, huh, Casey? No. I guess she's off me for life, Ethelbert. That was certainly a dirty trick that Logan played. Well, I can't blame him, really. I've stuck the needle into him so many times. That's so. Well, you don't have to agree with me. Gee, and you're also in wrong with Mrs. Valerie Thrush and uh, Detective Throckmorton. Yeah, plenty. They tell me that Throckmorton is the best two-fisted fighter in the department. Uh, they say he spends a couple of hours every day in the gymnasium. And you do most of your training leaning on this bar, Casey. Uh, Still in all, it ought to be a fight worth watching. Will you shut up? Why, Casey? Uh-oh. Well, here's Detective Throckmorton now. Uh, Kansas. Yeah, Miss Williams and Mrs. Valerie Thrush are with him. Well, they're, they're all, all together? And all looking very mean. Uh, yeah, I see. Hello, Casey. Uh, hello, Kansas. Hello, Casey. Oh, uh, glad to see you, Annie. Hello, Mr. Casey. Hi. Uh, good evening, uh, Mrs. Thrush. We've been looking for you. Yes. And now we found you. Now, look here. You I... sucked me after trying to turn Valerie against Now, listen, me. Kansas. You listen to us. You really hit Kansas and had him locked up so you could take his place, Casey. Annie, I You've swear. You've double-crossed I... all of us, Casey. I'm not going to take any more You're of this. You're taking plenty more. Shall I give it to you here? Will you step outside? Come on outside, Kansas. I tried to give the three of you honest explanations, and you haven't even listened to me. Come on outside. Oh, Casey, let me give it to you here. But, huh? <laughs> Let him, Casey. Yes, Valerie and I want to watch. <laughs> so do I, Casey. So what, what, what is it? Here, what? pal, I'm giving you first look at the engagement ring I've just bought Valerie. And I'm giving you this kiss for bringing Kansas and me together. Yeah. Gee. Hey, now give me a chance, Valerie. Annie? Uh... Annie? <laughs> <laughs> you, you double crossers. <laughs> I'm another, Casey. Logan. Hello, you... pal. <laughs> And me too, Casey. Yeah. You were in this too, Ethelbert? Uh-huh. And uh, now what'll it be, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, Casey, this celebration will be on you. Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is produced and directed by John Dietz. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole and is based on the fictional character of Flash Gun Casey, created by George Harmon Cox. Original music by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. This is Bill Cullen asking you to listen again next week at this same time to another exciting adventure of Crime Photographer. And also inviting you to listen to this is Nora Drake, radio's thrilling serial romance, heard every Monday through Friday over most of these stations. Consult your local newspaper for the exact time. Both of these programs brought to you each week by Tony Home Permanent, the wave that gives that natural look, and the new Tony Cream Shampoo for soft water shampooing even in the hardest water. And now stay tuned for the Hallmark Playhouse starring Richard Widmark in Enchanted Cottage, which follows immediately over most of these CBS stations. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week the Columbia Broadcasting System.